Good. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, I just want to start off by asking you, like, who are you and what are you studying here at Prairie View A&M University? Well, I'm Kenneth Osazua. I'm studying computer science and I'm a senior here at Prairie View. Okay. So when did you get started with businesses and, like, entrepreneurship? Uh, I've been doing entrepreneurship since the eighth grade. My dad, he owns an engineering firm in Houston, Texas, and... He calls me the vice president, but he wants me to take it over um, after I graduate from college. So he's been grooming me since middle school, you know, in the ways of a businessman. Uh, I do computer science because I'm in love with technological innovation. Okay. So could you say that you've started a company already? Yes, I actually have. Oh, can you tell us more about that? Like, what's your company name? Our company is Non-Power Technologies Incorporated. Mm -hmm. and. Our purpose is to hopefully take one step closer to eliminating the carbon footprint on our planet. Mm -hmm. Our technology is a wireless charging system that will be put in roadways to where electrical vehicle drivers can drive over them and the battery will be charging as they're driving. Oh so that will eliminate the need to ever have to stop unless you want to stop. And by any means, how did that dream pop into your head? Like, who said we needed this? And like, <laughs> Kenneth is going to be the person that gives it to us. I am a really big fan of Elon Musk, and I read all of his books and everything that he's doing with Tesla and SpaceX. And I can honestly say that he inspires me, and I came up with the idea. And I did some research, came to find out that it wasn't a, a new idea. But... Um, I got a good team together and we are slowly making this concept a reality. Okay. So um, we know that you're an entrepreneur, but you came to college yes. knowing that you didn't just want to get a job. Yes. So can you explain the mindset that you have to have to come to college knowing that you're getting an education, but mm -hmm. your goal is not to just be in corporate America? Well, both of my parents are entrepreneurs, so they gave me that influence at an early age. I would have to say that a lot of my friends around the country in New York or Boston at Harvard, Yale, they go to universities that foster, you know, entrepreneurship that, you know, even one of my friends, he started this uh, company where they are helping farmers in Nigeria and Harvard funded his trip to Nigeria to go and meet with them, mm -hmm. you know, and just being around people like that, it's inspired me to want to be greater and want to do more with my life myself. Uh, I feel that entrepreneurship is just, it's more than just money. It's about yeah. passion. It's about following your dream. And if you look at the people that really run things around the world, they are the people that were bold enough to jump and they mm. follow their dreams. Yes, yes. Hopefully one day I can be one of those people that said that I jumped as well and I can inspire somebody else to take a leap. Okay, so um, I looked at your resume and everything, and you do have experience with this company called Explosion yes. and also McHenry Mechanical. So just tell me about the ventures you've started in, like being a part of Explosion and also that um, McHenry Mechanical. Okay, well, McHenry Mechanical and Energy Incorporated is my father's firm. So we've done a lot of work within the Buffalo Bayou area of Houston with C. Stern, and we... My dad has done a lot of influential work throughout the city, and he's made sure to incorporate me in those processes so that one day when I do take it over, I can add my youthful creativity you know, in the mix and hopefully take the company to new heights. With Explosion, it was more so an idea, a concept, and I met with these guys, the founders, uh, Keelan and mm -hmm. Santiago, and they you know they liked what i was putting down and they were saying hey you know why don't we all work together to kind of make this a reality okay. um it was a really great venture and i believe in the product you know they're they're doing some really big things over at explosion but it came a time where i felt that i needed to do something for myself and okay. you know kind of following my dreams in my own mm -hmm. direction so okay. that's exactly what i decided to do when i started non-power technologies okay so on that note how can you tell people to just jump like why do people stay stagnant in their life and how can you tell them that it's time like do it now even though you're in college we were raised in a society that values being safe over mm -hmm. creative and i feel that 50 years from now what was your life worth you know what did you do that really left an impact on somebody else's life mm -hmm. are you happy with the life that you had did you settle you know i look at um 
my parents actually, you know, oh, look at your mates, you know, they're making A's, you're making B's, you know. Mm -hmm. And then in my head, I'm like, well, your mate made Microsoft and, you yeah. know, but um, it's just, you, you kind of, I was raised in a competitive environment where I was like, you know, 50 years from now, my friends, my peers, what is everybody going to do? People are going to get rich. People are going to become millionaires. Do I want that same lifestyle? Do I want financial security? Do I want to say that even if I didn't get rich, am I happy doing, you know, what mm -hmm. I'm doing? Yes. And I would love to be able to build something to the point that I could pass something on to my children, my son, my daughter, whoever. I just, you know, I feel that life is worth pursuing happiness over safety nets. So. Okay. So, you know, I'd, I'd love to follow you on Instagram and you are never in the same place in one <sighs> weekend. So I just want to know, how are you doing all this traveling? And so many people, believe it or not, have never left their hometown, their home state. Can you encourage them to travel the world? I would say when you travel outside of your own hometown, it definitely changes your perspective. Uh, you know, I went to Boston for the Forbes Under 30 conference in October and I met with an executive from the United Nations and she heard about what I'm doing with non-power technologies and she invited me to New York. Mm -hmm. I didn't have enough money, so I raised the GoFundMe and I raised $400 in a week. Mm -hmm. I have some great friends to thank for that, but you know, just even going to New York, it was always a dream of mine. I didn't yes. think that it was ever gonna be possible. If I did get a ticket, where would I stay? Who would mm -hmm. I know? And sometimes you just have to take that leap and God will do the rest. Yes, you know? he will. Oh, so. I know. Mm. So tell me about this 30 under 30 conference and how can more people learn about it and actually attend? Well, I would say that for the Forbes 30 under 30, it's the top entrepreneurs under the age of 30 in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, they have different ones in different locations in Asia and US and Canada, South America. But I would say that for me personally, I was invited. Uh, my mentor, he is on the Forbes list. So okay. that was something that was a great honor to me. Okay. Uh, I would say that I would definitely want to go back. So that is inspiring me to work harder this year mm -hmm. and to get recognized to the point that, you know, one day I can make that 30 under 30 list and ultimately the Forbes list. Okay, so, so how did you get a mentor that is on the Forbes <laughs> list? Talk to us. Oh, I mean, it's just about making relationships. Uh, okay. I knew him before I even cared about the entrepreneurial side. I just surround myself with people that are about making their life greater than it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't follow the straight and narrow path. They go out of their way to make their dreams a reality. And I love being around people like that. Okay. And so could you encourage more college students to get a mentor? And how do they keep that relationship past college? I would say getting a mentor is all about being personal with it, with, the, um, with each other. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people that have mentors, but their mentors only serve as one purpose to them for getting something out of the relationship. Mm -hmm. My mentor is my friend. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that I look up to, the people that I consider my big brothers, that I model my life and my career choices after, mm -hmm. they're people that I aspire to be like, and I gain every ounce of knowledge yes. that, you know, I, <laughs> that I possibly can, you know, even I have a brother-in-law, he pays his mentor 10000 just to be his mentor, you mm -hmm. know, because he values the knowledge of somebody that came before him mm -hmm. in that same path, you know, so much. And um, knowledge is very valuable, is. you know, so I just feel that it's all about being having personal relationships with people. At the end of the day, you know, you that you can ask for more for somebody you'd rather have a mentor and a friend somebody that'll look out for you if you need a job if you mm -hmm. need you know advice whatever the case may be they can be all of that in one okay now i want to ask you have you had any failures while following your passions <laughs> you know it is safe yeah. to follow the paycheck but what failures have you had and how did you overcome them i've had a lot of failures i've had to the point where i've had to cut people from my groups mm -hmm. from my startups I've had to leave startups. I've had to scrap ideas. Um, I've put over $5,000 into one idea of my own money, mm -hmm. you know, that I worked for and it ended up that somebody else already created it, you yeah. know? So I would say that, you know, failure is inevitable, but at the end of the day, when you look at these one, uh, these overnight hits, you mm -hmm. know, these people that just make it overnight, you would actually see a whole bunch of failure that they're standing on top mm -hmm. of. You know, they came through so much failure just to get to that one idea that was like, yeah. you know, so I just, I feel like I embrace failure now. Yeah. I used to run from it. I used to be afraid of it, but yes. 
failure is something that I embrace and I actually welcome because if I fail at something, I feel like, okay, now I can do better, okay. you know. So, you know, this is by faith and on your LinkedIn, you have three awards and honors. <laughs> One is 2016 World Technology Awards nominee. Yes. You are also the HBCU Silicon Valley Tech Circle. Yes. And you are on the 2016 panelists for sustainable development for 30 under 30. I want to just first tell you congratulations. Thank you. Um, can you tell everybody how old you are? I'm 21. Oh, you know, he, he just became legal to, you know, drink. <laughs> and uh, he, he has all of these accomplishments. So you guys out there, you can do it. It doesn't matter what age you are. But how do you feel to have these awards? And, like, what was your, your most favorite award, I guess? <laughs> uh, I would probably say that. I feel honored. I mean, anytime anybody recognizes my work, my endless nights of staying up till 4 or 5 a.m., you know, it's always appreciated. My favorite award was being a panelist for the 30 Under 30 Film Festival, okay. um, which the company is actually going to be doing a documentary on my company from the start to finish when oh we implement goodness. the charging system in the roads. So um, I would say being a panelist because everybody there were world leaders and CEOs and they were all around the age of 50 to 60 and I was 21, you know, baby faced, everyone's gray haired. Uh, everybody that was in the crowd was 25 to 35 in mm -hmm. that range. And, you know, just to inspire a new generation of people, you know, afterwards people were coming up to me and, you know, shaking my hand and, you know, saying how I inspired them to actually go out and accomplish their dreams. This is all about walking by faith. Can yes. you tell me what walking by faith really means to you? I would say walking by faith is taking that next step in your life and not knowing that end destination and trusting that God is going to provide for you. Yeah. With whatever it is that you decide to do, whatever direction that you choose to go, that God has a purpose for your life, a purpose greater than your own understanding and that you know, one day when you do realize what that purpose is, the satisfaction will be greater than you could have ever imagined. Okay.